Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Dell Technologies World live from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Keith Townsend and we're excited to welcome to theCUBE for the first time Varun Chabra, Senior Director, Product Marketing, Dell EMC Storage and Data Production. Hey Varun. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, our pleasure. So, the theme of, De first, Dell Technologies World, huge, yeah. 14,000 people. Absolutely. 5,000 plus partners here. Um, make it real. What does that mean? What are you helping customers make real as it relates to all these different transformational initiatives? Yeah. Digital, IT, workforce, security. Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, I'm, an, I'm a product marketer. By, by trade, so we throw around a lot of buzzwords, right, we've been guilty of that. But one of the things that I've observed over the last year or so is every customer that we speak to, they are, uh, they're really thinking about digital transformation. And you know, it could have different words, but really what it means is the economy is getting increasingly digitized, right? And when you have something getting increasingly digitized, it leaves a digital marker. Every activity leaves a digital marker. and. Uh, in other words, that's basically data, right? What is data but a digital marker? And it's just fascinating. What, what customers that we talk to, they're very aware that um, there's, because of all this activity that they're able to track uh, and draw insights out of, if they don't do that, their competitors might do it, right? Or uh, you could have upstarts coming up and disrupting a, a particular business model. And, and in the media, we often hear a lot about, you know, Netflix, Tesla, and of course, those are great examples, but we see this in every industry, right? You, you know, whether it's genomics, uh, you know, healthcare, in media and entertainment, it's happening everywhere. Whether it's companies reinventing themselves to trying to disrupt their own business models to stay relevant, or um, you know, new startups coming in and, and trying to say, how can we do this differently? So let's talk about the impact of digital transformation on storage and data protection. Yep. What data is? the new oil, all the buzzwords we want to throw into that. Yeah. You as a marketer, you have to translate yeah. into yeah. what that means from a technology perspective. For the boots on the ground, what does digital transformation yeah. mean yeah. to the store, people concerned yes. with storage and data? Absolutely, uh, it basically means, it means data. Like uh, what is underpinning, uh, you know, a lot of times we talk to customers, they'll say, oh, I, I have big data initiatives, right, because they're trying to, uh, to make digital transformation real, you need to pull out insights from the data. So it's big data, IOT, you know, pick your, uh, pick your buzzword, ML, AI. But if you take a step back, all of these initiatives, they're basically dependent on data. So you can't run an ML or AI algorithm without data. People talk about neural networks. Neural networks are networks of data. And, and uh, what we find with customers is that they know that they have a lot of data, but they run into a lot of challenges with them. So there's really three big challenges. One is, how do we, uh, you know, you could have data sitting in one system, you could have data sitting in another system, it's in silos. And if you, if you have data locked in silos, you can't correlate them. If you can't correlate them, you really can't run analytics, right? The magic of, of insights comes out when you're correlating disparate data. Um, that's one problem. Now, if you, if you have everything in one single unified data lake, let's say you don't have silos, then there's this, the, the, the volume of data that's growing. And it's just, it's incredible. Uh, uh, it's not uncommon for uh, our customers to tell us that they're seeing 30, 40, 50% year over year growth in their data. I mean, if you think about it, that's, you're talking exponential growth in, in a few years, right? Um, so how do, you, how, do you, uh, how do you harness all that growth? How do you keep it on your systems of record without you know, going bankrupt? Because it, often it is, it is a question of just managing all that data growth. Now let's say, that's challenge number two, let's say you've done that as well. And you need to be able to draw insights out of it, right? Just because you have data sitting somewhere um, doesn't mean that you're going to be able to pull out analytics, doesn't mean that your processes and systems are really organized with it. All of this is basic, is, this is really uh, what we help try to do with customers. I mean, we have products like Isilon and ECS that are at the forefront of, forefront of unstructured data, which is really 80% of the data today is unstructured. Uh, you know, we help create unified data lakes for our customers so they don't have data sitting in silos. And then these platforms are scale-out platforms so they scale very cost effectively. 
and then they all support analytics um, natively. So you can run you know, big data analysis on the storage platform itself. You mentioned insights, and that's you know actionable insights, another marketing buzzword there. But it's yep. it's imperative for an organization to be able to have a foundation to be able to act on yes. those insights. Yes. So you, you talk about you know people say data, more buzzwords, the new oil. Yes. Um, really, kind of think of it, a former biologist, as a because ah, you know companies that do it well, that, do, that transform well, are able to apply data to different multiple use cases at yes. the same time. Yes. Combine it, yes. recombine yes. it, and but then they also need to have this agile infrastructure to be able to um, take, take the yeah. a, take take advantage of that, be able to uh, adapt their software, yeah. use things like sensors and smart devices. Yeah. Yeah that are telling them how yes. customers are interacting with products yes. and services and deliver something that's differentiated. So as Dell EMC yeah. is doing that yourselves, yeah. is there any that, that yeah. pops Absolutely. to mind that you know, this is a great hallmark of digital transformation? Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, to just talk about what you, extend what you said, we actually are starting to call data a capital asset. You know, it's not very different from the other things that you have on your balance sheet. There just isn't a scientific method or an agreed upon method to really value it yet but I am sure that 10 years from now or maybe earlier, just like we have stock exchanges, you could probably have data exchanges, right? Where you have data being traded, it's monetized, it's valued. So, uh, you know, a classic example of what you said is uh, we had a customer come in that uh, owns a sports franchise, uh, uh, a very popular sports franchise in the United States. They also own their own arenas, right? So, so they have Bluetooth sensors, 80 Bluetooth sensors sitting all over their, their uh, stadium they have loyalty apps for their customers. When they come in, they open the app up, you know, with permissions, it connects to the Bluetooth sensors. And now, to your point about the data unlocking or catalyzing different, the, uh, you know, the, the sheer number of things that can be done with that data to help improve the experience, uh, both for the, the, the viewer, but also for the businesses that support, you know, the, the, the restaurants that are in the, the vendors that are in the arena as well, is just mind boggling. So for example, you can now, these people can now track when someone's walking, uh, whether they're walking towards, let's say, a barbecue joint a vendor uh, in the arena, and if they're standing there first, they, they actually know if they're standing or if they're just walking by, and if they're standing, they have digital signage close to uh, you know, these places where they can serve up ads and say, hey, here's a discount, right? Because you're probably looking at the, uh, at the barbecue joint and thinking, do I really want to eat this? Or maybe I should, do am I in the mood for ribs today? And then, Presto, you get an ad next to you saying, hey, we have a two for one or something, right? And uh, so that's great from a commerce perspective, but then also for um, like the restroom lines. So if you know that a lot of people are congregated in one, one restroom, you can actually say, hey, like direct people towards other areas, right? And then beer kegs, like they have sensors under their beer kegs that are tracking uh, when a beer keg is almost empty, all right. You're going to send a signal to uh, the kitchen, they are going to roll out a beer keg before it gets over, right? Think about how that reduces wait times while you're replacing beer kegs, and so it's all one set of data enabling so many different things for just improving experience. Wow, wherever this place is, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 this, this <laughs> sounds sound like a cool place. So let's uh, kind of blow out a section of your title. That's deceptive, I think, in a, a, a sense to protect that access, yeah. but data protection has now become, I think, a catch-all for much more than just data protection. Yes. These products backing data protection yes. are all not just about protecting data, but adding mobility to data. Yep. Can you talk about the need to uh, be able to take data and move it from where it's ingested to where it can be uh, further uh, crunched from a uh, yes, absolutely. machine like, learning perspective? That's a great point, Keith. So we, we talk about data originating in different sources, the edge, the core, or the cloud, and really that mobility is, is super critical. Um, you know, if you just expand out a little bit more and just think about the Dell Technologies portfolio, we have data that's being generated on the edge with sensors and devices. A lot of, the, with, with the advent of sort of the edge computing, you're beginning to see a lot more new computing models. So now you have this notion of the fog, right? So you have many data centers that are collecting data. You could be running some real-time analytics on there, you know, um, high-level real-time analytics to make decisions about, let's say you're in a factory. You could have a fog data center in a factory that's, that's, or you could call it the edge as well, 
basically detecting uh, uh, defects in a particular spare part, right? And then you have real-time analytics going on there. But then all of that data also gets pushed into a central data center where you're running machine learning algorithms and you're training your, your real-time analytic systems to be that much more effective, right? To be that much more accurate. And in these situations, like every point, single point decimal makes a huge difference in a company's bottom or top line. So yes, I think data mobility from the edge to the core to the cloud or the fog, whatever you want to call it, is very, very critical and, and different use cases in different areas are, are driving that, that mobility. I'd love to understand what some of the differentiators are. What, you know, we're at Dell Technologies World, the first one uh, indicative of the absorption of the EMC yeah. Federation companies yeah. within yeah. Dell. What differentiates what you're delivering and helping customers achieve from your competition? Yeah, I mean, my, my specific areas of expertise are basically Isilon, ECS, our file storage platform and object storage platform. And, and really, what the, there are three things that differentiate us. We are really focused on creating, eliminating silos, so unifying everything into one data lake. Whether it's in the edge, the core, or the cloud, we want to provide a, a, a common sort of data lake experience for our apps and for our users. The second thing is we're, we're uh, hyper-focused on providing cost-effective scaling mechanisms. So if you scale, you're going to be able to handle that data care in a much more cost-effective manner than if you have a product that's not scaled out, for example. And the third thing that we do is that's really different is that we support inline analytics on the storage platform itself. If you think about um, a large model, a large part of the model for analytics today is direct attached storage, and I think that's going to continue to have a large place to play. But shared storage is becoming increasingly a uh, viable option for running analytics without having to moving it somewhere, running the analytics on it and moving it back. You know, just more efficient to just basically run analytics on it. So it's really those three things that, that we think differentiate us from our um, competition. So we can't have a conversation about storage and data without talking about cloud. Can you talk about the cloud strategy that integrates with your product portfolio? Absolutely. Um, you know, as Michael said in the keynote yesterday, cloud is not a, a destination, it's a model, right? And, and really what we find is um, every customer has their own cloud roadmap, right? So it, as a vendor, it doesn't behoove us to say, we have this one size fits all solution for you. It's really incumbent upon us to really meet the customer where they are. So whether it's with Isilon or with ECS, we have a host of different uh, consumption models. So you could have, you could, you know, you could run it as an appliance from us, right by a person from us. You could run, for example, ECS as a software defined platform. So if you're running, if you want to be really agile and you want to have servers that are running, you know, uh, industry standard servers versus uh, proprietary hardware, we can do that as well. And then as we start thinking about the public cloud. We um, just announced, actually Michael announced uh, yesterday that we're now offering Isilon uh, with Google Cloud. So you could actually run Isilon systems co-located with your Google compute clusters. So all the wealth of uh, you know, the, the, the analytics capabilities that Google has and then the compute capabilities that they have, you now don't have to compromise in terms of your file storage platform. You can actually run uh, uh, enterprise ready, scale, scalable file system in the Google uh, or co-located with the Google cluster as well. So that's a new, um, I guess I'd say a new model that we're looking at with customers because customers are telling us they love our products. You know, on premises there is a, pl a place for that, but they also want to be able to, if they're making bets on you know some of the big cloud providers, they want to be able to consume our products and take advantage of the pro the features that they have on premises in the cloud as well. So we're we're definitely trying to meet customers where uh, where they are in the cloud. And, and last question as we wrap up here, uh, 5,000 channel partners, yep. technology partners that are here. What are you hearing from the channel is oftentimes the channel partners are at the, at the forefront yes. of talking with customers yes. about, about a digital transformation yes. strategy. What's some of the feedback from the channel been? The first thing that I notice as a product marketer, uh, our partners always keep us honest and the minute they hear a buzzword, you see their face frown, right? But I will tell you that in my meetings this year, anytime I talk about digital transformation, they are looking at us with rapt attention because they are validating to us that their customers, just like ours, are you know our customers together. This is top of mind for them, right? And uh, and and uh, the other thing that I'm hearing from uh, from partners a lot is this notion that va uh, data actually has value, that it's an asset that customers are starting to value. Um, it's it's honestly a great time to be in in the tech space. It's a great time to be in the storage space because uh, we are we're able to show customers what. Uh, how we can help transform their business. I mean, 
five or six years ago to be able to say that about a storage platform was probably marketing speak, right? <laughs> but uh, it's real right now. Well, Varun, thanks so much for stopping by, sharing what's new, and as, as we've kind of talked about, digital transformation isn't a buzzword, it's not a nice to have, it's a mandatory. So thanks for your time yeah, and, you for and clarifying me. things. It was very, very informative. Yeah. And thanks for dealing with this loud music show that's going on here. <laughs> we want to thank you for continuing to watch theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend, live from Dell Technologies World 2018. Stick around, we'll be right back.